To the east of Marlow, the River Thames bulges around a small island that has a lock on one side and a frothing weir on the other. In the calm water beyond lie some of the town's smartest properties. Sir Peter Bailey's house, White Lodge, was perhaps the grandest of the lot. It was a three-storey Georgian mansion in cream stucco, a grass tennis court on one side, a white-painted glass orangery on the other, with an Elizabethan-style knot garden in front of it. On the riverside, the mown stripes of lawn looked even sharper, even more precise, than anything the neighbours were able to muster. As for Sir Peter's boat, moored at the bottom of the garden, it was a sleek motor launch finished in polished wood that he'd imported from Venice. Everything about the property oozed money, and Susie didn't quite know where to park her clapped-out dog-walking van when she and Judith arrived. Luckily for them, a fresh-faced teenager in a high-vis jacket indicated that they should park in the field next door to the garden. Bloody hell, Susie said as they climbed out of her van. Imagine having car parking attendants for your party. It was one of those January days that was fresh and sunny, with cotton wool clouds in a bright blue sky. And as Judith and Susie entered the garden, they could see a hundred or so smartly dressed people chatting and laughing by a gleaming marquee. I reckon I could get my house in that marquee two times over, Susie said. Are you sure they won't mind you bringing me? Of course not. I'm not exactly dressed for a party.